This is the Moe's drummer from another mother, also known as the D-Fan. It's a flexible and powerful analog percussion synthesizer with a feature set designed to inspire the creation of a broad range of effective electronic drum sounds and rhythms. Two oscillators, each with an independently selectable wave shape and a noise generator can be mixed together and then shaped via three dedicated modulation envelopes The sound can then be processed through a classic sounding four pole multi mode ladder filter. Rhythmic patterns can be quickly and efficiently programmed with an eight step sequencer that provides independent control over the pitch and velocity of each step. And the integrated 24 point patch bay offers a comprehensive selection of CV inputs and outputs, which can be utilized to further manipulate the sound of the DFAM or to interface and interact with external instruments, such as Eurorack format synthesizer modules. To begin, I'll make sure that the volume is turned up and that the filter is set to low pass and the cutoff is at its maximum level. I've created an empty pattern by turning all of the sequencer velocity knobs to their lowest settings. I'll set my tempo and press the run stop button to start the sequencer. However, I won't hear anything until I begin to increase the velocity level of one or more steps. As the velocity value raises above zero, so does the level of the sound triggered at that particular step. To better illustrate the impact of some of the DFAM's parameter controls, I'll isolate oscillator one by reducing the mixer levels of the second oscillator and the noise source to their minimum values. Each oscillator has an independent waveform selection switch toggling between a triangle or square wave shape. The VCO frequency knob sets the pitch of the oscillator with a range that spans roughly 10 octaves. I'll flip the sequencer pitch modulation switch from off to VCO 1 and 2. And now the frequency can be controlled at each sequencer step by adjusting the eight pitch knobs. The pitch knobs act as bipolar offsets to the oscillator frequency. When set to their 12 o'clock position, the offset level is zero and therefore there will be no change to the pitch. Turning the knob clockwise, will add to the current value of the VCO frequency. Conversely, turning the knob counterclockwise will decrease the pitch relative to the current value. Increase the VCO2 level, and you'll now begin to hear the sound of the second oscillator layered with the first. Because each oscillator has its own frequency control, the pitch of VCO2 can be tuned independently of VCO1 allowing for a wider range of tonal possibilities. Activating hard sync will force the phase of VCO2 to match VCO1. This results in a closely correlated pitch between the two oscillators and ultimately a more complex wave shape. Switch it back and the frequency of VCO2 can once again be adjusted independently. At this point, the DFAM is proving to be an effective dual oscillator monosynth, capable of quickly generating and manipulating melodic patterns and phrases but now it's time to begin using it for its intended purpose. It's rare that striking a percussive instrument would result in a fixed pitch, so adding some form of pitch modulation is essential for designing electronic drum sounds, and the VCO envelope generators are usually the best place to start. 
Each of the VCO EG knobs are dedicated to modulating the frequency of their respective oscillators. Like the pitch sequencer knobs, they act as a bipolar offset. Adjustments in the positive direction will cause the pitch to start higher and then drop to the current setting of the frequency knob. Turn the knob in the negative direction and an inverse reaction occurs. Extreme values in either direction create a more dramatic sweeping effect. The length of time it takes the resulting increase or decrease in pitch to occur is determined by the setting of the VCO decay knob. At its lower settings, the response is extremely fast, enhancing the transient or attack of the sound. As the value increases, the duration of the pitch change also increases. It's important to note that the velocity knobs have an impact on the strength of this pitch modulation as well. Therefore, higher velocity settings may increase the decay time by a small amount. The FM amount control will cause the frequency of oscillator 2 to be modulated by oscillator 1. The outcome will be very much dependent on the settings of both the frequency and wave shape parameters of each VCO, so a little experimentation goes a long way. Modifying the FM amount breeds substantially more complex wave shapes. It can introduce additional harmonics, ultimately giving rise to atonal or metallic timbres. An integrated noise generator functions as a third possible sound source. Like the two VCOs, the noise level is controlled via a knob located in the mixer section. Introducing noise into the mix can bring texture and body to electronic drum sounds, or if used in isolation, can become the starting point for designing synthetic cymbals and hi-hats. Because noise has no inherent pitch information, adjustments to the sequencer pitch knobs will have no influence on it. But its output level is still sequenced by the velocity knobs. It's only taken a few minor parameter adjustments to develop a pattern that incorporates multiple types of basic electronic drum sounds. Just by itself, the DFAM is quite capable of producing a broad spectrum of sounds, all without the aid of external modulation or control sources. But we're not done yet. The VCA decay knob establishes the length of the sound that results when a step is triggered. Lower values produce tight, snappy percussive hits. Higher settings extend the sound towards the next step. The VCA EG switch allows for the selection of either a fast one millisecond attack time or a slow option, which yields a much softer initial impact. A resonant voltage controlled filter, or VCF, is available to shape the overall tone of the DFAM's output. It utilizes the classic mode four-pole ladder filter design, applying a steep 24 decibel per octave attenuation beginning at the filter's cutoff frequency. There are two filter types to choose from. Low pass, which reduces the high frequency content, often useful for emphasizing the low end, or high pass, 
which will cause the bass frequencies to roll away as the cutoff value is increased. Increase the resonance knob and the filter will begin to accentuate the frequency at the cutoff point, often adding a biting character. If pushed hard enough, it will begin to self-oscillate and thereby begin to take on a pitch of its own. Variances in the settings of the eight velocity knobs will help introduce life and movement to the DFAM sequences. The velocity has a direct impact on the amplitude of the envelope generators, so higher values produce stronger, harder hitting sounds. Employing a mix of velocity levels will ensure that a pattern has a dynamic feel. The dedicated VCF envelope generator section serves to modulate the cutoff frequency. It behaves in a similar fashion to the VCO envelope controls. The decay knob dictates the length of the modulation, and a bipolar control determines its depth. Move it counterclockwise, and now the cutoff frequency will initially be lower and rise until it settles at its target. Turn the knob clockwise and the cutoff frequency will start high and decrease to its current setting. The noise VCF mod parameter allows the filter cutoff to be further modulated by the noise generator. It's best used for adding distortion or grit to the sound, creating a distinctly lo-fi feel. It would be difficult to exhaust the creative possibilities presented by the basic control interface of the DFAM, but its real strength lies in the enhanced flexibility of its semi-modular architecture. In the next video, I'll explore the potential to be found in DFAM's 24-point patch bay, with practical examples of both internal and external CV patch routings.